Hello and welcome to this uh, webinar about PayPal and Odoo. Uh, we receive a lot of questions about e-invoicing at the moment, so we thought we might just make a webinar about it to give you some info about what you can do in Odoo. All right, so first, uh, but what is PayPal? So, so maybe you've already heard of it, uh, maybe you haven't, um, but soon it will be something that we all have to deal with, so let's see a little bit what that means. Um, but before we do that, just the evolution of invoicing. So before, obviously, we had to uh, create our invoices manually and you had to input the name of your client and the products and, and so on. Um, and then we moved on to OCR, where you could uh, digitize your PDF uh, invoices, just sending them through the OCR and then Odoo would just pick up all the information by scanning the document. Uh, and now the next step, obviously, is e-invoicing and that's the topic of this video. Um, but it's important to know that all three options are still available in Odoo, so you can choose the one that you are uh, more comfortable with. But obviously, e invoicing is where we're going to, so we might as well just get on board. All right, so let's see a little bit uh, about PayPal. Um, as you can see from the name, uh, it is a European uh, platform uh, that we're going to be using to uh, exchange documents. So it doesn't always have to be invoices, it can be other types of documents. Um, but the main advantage of this, obviously, is that uh, we're going to be using standardized formats. That means that we can share them uh, easily with other parties uh, and also with other um, companies in European countries and maybe some other countries outside of Europe. Um, but yeah, obviously, everyone is going to use the same standard, so it's very uh, easier to just share these documents. And also, it's much more secure using this platform than just sending an invoice by email. Uh, or by post. So why is it important and why are we uh, recording this video? Well, um, obviously, depending on where you are watching this video from, uh, you might want to check for your own country. Uh, but I'm using here two examples, uh, Belgium and uh, Luxembourg, uh, because they are the two countries where we have the most registered user uh, for uh, PayPal. Um, so for Belgium, it's already mandatory to use uh, e-invoicing for transactions with public institutions. Um, but soon it will be mandatory uh, to use that as well for B2B transactions, so company to company. Uh, and that is in 2026, so it's very soon. Um, that's why we receive a lot of questions about this uh, subject. And then for Luxembourg, uh, it's already mandatory too for B2G transactions, so for public institutions you already have to uh, send your invoices uh, via PayPal since 2021. And there is no deadline yet for B2B transactions, um, but there will soon be one for sure. So um, I think it's a good opportunity to actually uh, digitize your entire uh, invoicing process and maybe your company, um, because this is coming, so you might as well just uh, start using it now. So how does it work? Um, well, here in this slide, you can see what we call the four corner model. So basically, we have one user uh, who wants to share a document. So it can be an invoice or something else. Um, and they have their own access point that helps them to connect to PayPal. So platform is this platform where we're going to be uh, putting the documents. OK, so it's important to know that everyone has only one access point. You can't have several. It's just one access point. Uh, and everyone can use their own. So it doesn't have to be the same. Uh, so for instance, user A and user B can be using different access points. Um, so user A is going to put its document on the platform uh, through its access point, and user B can then retrieve it with his own uh, later uh, or and automatically. All right, this is what we call the four-corner model. Uh, soon in the future, we, we might be talking about a five-corner model where the state and the administration is already also involved for VAT purposes and reporting. Uh, but for now, let's keep it simple and just uh, use this one. As you can see below, uh, there are uh, several formats that you can use for uh, these documents. We'll be talking about them in a minute in the demo. Um, but yeah, so obviously we talk about this because since Odoo 17, uh, we are an access point for uh, PayPal. That means that you can use Odoo to send and or receive document via PayPal. Uh, and also not um, unimportant, it is free. Uh, again, for small companies who cannot uh, afford to use um, expensive access points, well, you can use Odoo because it's free and it's for all of Europe. Okay, so depending on where you are watching us, uh, you can also use Odoo as an access point. 
Now, in the um, in Odoo itself, uh, you can use either our invoicing application or accounting application. Uh, it's basically the same thing. In my case, I'm just going to be using um, accounting, but invoicing is the same principle. All right, so I created a um, empty database for this video, and I'm going to go right to my accounting uh, setups and the settings to activate Bepo. Okay, it's an option. Uh, at the moment, not everyone uh, needs it, so you have to activate it to start the process. So in this case, I'm just going to tick this box and save. So when you do that, uh, Odoo is just going to be loading the modules that we need uh, to uh, use Bepo. Once it's done, I'm just going to search on it again. You see here we have a different screen now uh, with Bepo with different uh, information that I have to uh, put about my company. Very important, uh, you can send and or receive documents, so you can choose. Uh, that's extra flexibility uh, that you have now. Before it was not the case. Uh, so you can choose how you want to use Odoo uh, as an access point. And then you have to enter your information uh, of the company. So you have your EAS uh, number. So that's based on the country where you are uh, located. So here in this case, uh, for Belgium, it is this number. But choose the one that you have to choose. And then your endpoint, um, yeah, based on where you are, uh, it will be either your VAT number or your company number. Um, yeah, it depends on the country where you are located. And then you have to enter a mobile phone number. Uh, you can see it's a requested field. And very important, you have to use the right format. So in this case, plus 32 for Belgium. And I'm just going to uh, use a random number. It's important because we use that as a KYC process to make sure that the people would do the connection and register themselves on uh, Pepo. Actually, would they say they are? Because then you receive a validation code on your uh, mobile phone that you have to enter to um, register. Okay, you also have to put an email address, but that's not so uh, important. It's just one way for us to communicate with you. Uh, I'm just going to activate the demo uh, here in this uh, presentation. Obviously, for you, you have to choose the live uh, environment. But here, in this case, I'm just going to use the demo. Once that's done, I am registered uh, on Pepo. I can find here my uh, Pepo number and that I can communicate to my suppliers and contacts so that they can send me documents uh, via Pepo. But also interesting, I can um, select the journal where I want to receive my vendor bills, for instance. So here in this case, I only have one journal, so I'm just going to use this one. But if you wanted to isolate uh, the documents that you receive uh, via Pepo, you can create a separate uh, journal, but I'm just going to use this one. And also, uh, quite recent in Odoo, you can also choose a workspace in the document application where uh, we're going to save uh, a copy of the document. So in this case, I'm just going to choose my finance workspace and I'm going to create a new tag for my Pepo documents, link it to documents and then save. Okay, so I'm going to save my settings and now everything is uh, okay. So we can just go in a live environment and see how it works. Right, so I'm here in the accounting application. Uh, I have registered my company and now I can start sending invoices. But first, obviously, I have to put some extra info on my customers. Okay, so everyone, as I said, has their own people endpoint number. Uh, so now I have to add it on every contact form. Okay, I have it here for my Luxembourgish client. Um, we have different formats, as you can see, and I said it before with the four corner model. Uh, you have here different uh, formats. So the, the main one, uh, the standard for people is this billing 3.0. You can see there are other formats because some countries have already decided to um, add some info that they require uh, at a national level. So for instance, Factor X is for France, we have Xrechnung for Germany, and then NLC is for the Netherlands, also New Zealand and Singapore. Um, all that to say that we are going to be adding these formats as soon as they are available. Um, but right now, these are the only ones that we have. 
Then we have the uh, EAS number of Luxembourg. Uh, it's based automatically on the country of my uh, contact. So Odoo knows me this is from Luxembourg. And the VAT number, which in this case is the endpoint. Once I've put in all this information, I can verify my uh, data to make sure that it's the correct one. Since everyone has to register, uh, we can check if the information is correct. And I can see here in this case that this number is valid. So let's go back to my list of customers. Um, if I open a list view, uh, you will see here, you can add extra uh, info here in the menu to see the uh, formats and the uh, endpoints of your contacts. And also the validity, which is important, because imagine you have 300 clients or more. Um, well, it's a little bit annoying to check line by line. Well, you have an option in Odoo to select everything and then the action button, you have an action to verify people. So you can check all your contacts in one go uh, if they have a valid endpoint or not. If it's not the case or you don't have the info, like in this case, um, well, you have to ask them to provide you with the information. Okay, A little bit like a, a phone number or an email address, they have to give you their own uh, people endpoint. So now that my contacts are okay, let's create an invoice for my LU company. Here, I'm just gonna send them one product. Uh, in this case, a pedal bin, right? So I have my price and my VAT and everything. I can confirm, so the process is exactly the same as before. Nothing has changed. Uh, I confirm, I can send and print. Once I do that, you can see that automatically, because there is a valid endpoint on my contact, Odoo knows that I can send them via PayPal. Okay? I can choose to download the invoice if I want, but I'm not going to do it in this case. I could still send it by email if I wanted to, uh, but there's no point in doing that anymore because it's going to be sent anyway via PayPal. Okay? So I can just click on send and print. Um, Odoo is going to send the invoice directly. Um, again, as before, I have my PDF on the side. And in the chatter, I can see here that this document has been sent to the PayPal access point for processing. All right, because indeed, if I check now in the list of invoices, I have also extra fields that I can use. And in this case, the important one is the PayPal status, where I can see which um, invoices have been sent. So in this case, the last one that I created for my PayPal bin is still pending reception. Uh, that means that the client still hasn't received um, the invoice on his own uh, platform. Okay, but that's also because uh, I'm in a test environment, let's say, um, and it's going to run automatically. The, the status of the invoices are going to be checked automatically every few hours. But if I want to go a little bit faster, I can use this option on my journal to fetch the information manually. So if I click here and I enter my list again, you will see now that it, it's done. Okay, because the point obviously is that these invoices are sent and received uh, immediately. So it's done. My client has received my invoice. So actually, let's go and see what it means on their side. Same principle here on my uh, purchase uh, journal. I can see I still have nothing here, but if I fetch the status manually, then I can see I have one bill to validate. So if I open the list, I will see here, okay, this is my Belgian company uh, and my invoice for the same amount. It's in draft, obviously. I still need to control it and post it myself. Uh, uh, that's very important. But I can see here in the chatter that this uh, invoice came from uh, PayPal. I have the XML here as well in the chatter. And if everything is okay, I can just confirm it. But you will also see here uh, at the top that I have a smart button um, linked to the document application. Uh, if you remember during the setup, I chose a specific workspace and a new uh, tag. So if I click on here, I am automatically sent to the document application where I will find my invoice with the right tag people that I created before. All right, so you can see it's very easy to start with uh, Odoo to use PayPal and e-invoicing. Uh, everything is integrated as always. And also because you can use um, invoicing or accounting, you can benefit from a one-up free pricing. So if you are looking for a solution or if you know 
uh, people who are looking for a solution, what they can easily use or do by creating a uh, database and using our app. So let's go back to the slides uh, and do a little recap of what we've just seen. Um, so if you wanted to, to use uh, Pepo in Odoo, you have to activate the option that's important. When you do that, Odoo is going to automatically upload uh, some uh, modules. You have to enter your own um, information and choose to send or receive documents, and uh, that's important. Uh, maybe more for um, external uh, accountants. Uh, if you have clients who use their own uh, software to um, invoice their clients, um, you can still book the, um, all the entries and receive their uh, vendor bills automatically in Odoo. Uh, so it's one or the other. Uh, it's more flexibility for everybody. And finally, um, as I said, yeah, you can only have one access point. So um, if you are already registered somewhere else and you think, okay, maybe I'll give Odoo a try, um, but you can just use the migration key. Every system has to offer this option. So you can uh, definitely find your migration key, put it here, and then you can migrate from one system to the next. Uh, and then finally, as I said, the phone number is very important for KYC purposes. So make sure you enter your phone number and click here on send a registration code first, and then you can register easily on Pepple. Uh, and then last step is to choose uh, your own journal, um, synchronize maybe with the document application if you want by creating your own tag. And you can always see here at the bottom um, your status. Uh, in this case here, uh, it's active. I can send and receive. And I have here my people identification number. So if I want to communicate that to somebody, um, this is where I can find the info. Okay, so I hope you found this all very interesting and it's a little bit clear for you how you can use Odoo easily for your e-invoicing. Um, thank you for your attention and then we'll see you in another video.